every aspect of my life needs to be put to prayer, and it also needs to be studied out in the Word of God, because God's Word contains principles, principles that are life-giving, life-changing, and they provide the wisdom from above for everything we need in life. A principle is not a black and white rule. It's a principle is basically the foundation of how to make a decision or what to do in different circumstances. And so I wanted to share one passage in scripture that I have found has timeless and principles that I use daily in my life. And I pray through the Holy Spirit that this will be a blessing to you too. The passage is found in the second, in Second Chronicles chapter 20. And in Second Chronicles chapter 20, this is one of those wars in the Bible. And I remember when my, I had encouraged my mother to read the Bible, and one day she said to me, I don't like all those wars in the Bible. But what I'm learning is this is not a battle plan for an earthly battle for us. We are not under a theocracy anymore. God is not um, conducting our battles in terms of a human army, but he is conducting the battles for the spiritual battles that we experience. And so this is a spiritual battle plan for victory in our lives. Second Chronicles chapter 20, and I'm just going to read some of the verses, and then we're going to talk about the principles as they apply. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and I can't pronounce all these words, the Mennonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Now Jehoshaphat was the king at that time. It was told to Jehoshaphat, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the sea from Syria. Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together, and they came to seek the Lord. And then Jehoshaphat begins to pray before the congregation. And he said, Lord, God of our fathers, art thou, art thou not God in heaven? And rules over all the kingdoms of the heathen? In your hand there is power and might. None is able to withstand thee. And then he continues to talk about what God has done in the past. And then he says down in verse 12, God, will you not judge them? We have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And then the Spirit of God came upon Jehaziel, and he stood up in the midst of the congregation, and in verse 15 he said, Hearken, Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Verse 16, Tomorrow go out against them, Gives them the location of where to go. Verse 17, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and fell to the ground, and all the inhabitants did too, and they worshipped the Lord. Verse 20, they rose early in the morning and they went forth. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat told them, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall he prosper. And then he appointed singers. And it says in verse 21, they praised the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and they said, and they sang, praise the Lord for his mercy and yours forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, verse 22, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. They were smitten. And in verse 24, it says, none escaped. It was a complete 100% victory. We need a complete 100% victory in our life, too, over the sins that so easily beset us, over those temptations that come
come from the enemy of our soul. But what is our battle plan? Well, there are great, timeless, and necessary principles in this passage of Scripture. First, they determined the problem. Then they sought God, and they fasted. They prayed with each other. They praised God for his great power, first of all. They built their faith and hope and trust by focusing on God's grace, God's power, God's goodness, and they listed, they remembered what God had done for them in the past, knowing that he never changes. Verse 12, they admitted their own weakness, but they chose to follow God's will. They listened to his prophet, they listened to his words, and they obeyed. And then in verse 18 through 19, they praised and worshiped God. They submitted to his counsel. Verse 20, they went, got up early in the next morning, and they went forth as order. They didn't procrastinate. That's a big one we have to remember, at least me. Verse 20, when it said to believe in your God and believe in his prophets, God wants us to study his word and the spirit of prophecy in order to be able to determine what we should do. We can ask God for wisdom and he promises to give it to us. Now our part is to study, to take the Bible, to take the spirit of prophecy, to study the subject set, whatever it may be, to use a concordance, to use, um, like uh, Joe had mentioned earlier about the CD-ROM, the writings of Ellen White on a disc in a computer, or if you don't have a computer, can get a set of three indexes and it'll have listed for you by subject where to read in her writings in the books of the sphere of prophecy what God's counsels are. And it's true, if we were thorough in studying our Bible, we wouldn't have the need for the sphere of prophecy, but because it takes much time um, and much uh, enlightenment and much Holy Spirit power to study the Bible and receive all the same answers, it is a time saver in many ways to study the spirit of prophecy. It's already explained to us and applied, many of the principles applied for us in these last days. Well, then they sang in verse 21. And so praise and song are weapons not only against discouragement, but they provide us with a connection, an immediate connection with heaven, because song and praise is the language of heaven. That's what every time you read about angels in the Bible, well, not every time, but Many times when you read about angels in the Bible, they are singing and praising the Lord. And in verse 24, then, they have the complete victory. And that is what God wishes for us as well, a complete Amen. victory. This is just one example of how we can take the principles in the Word of God and apply them practically in our life. And this is a, a, um, a, a recipe for victory over sin that we need every day of our lives. In the book Education, there is a quote that I have memorized in the past, but I haven't practiced it lately, so I am going to read it so that I don't misquote it in any way. This is the book Education by Ellen White. This quote is on the bottom of page 81 and finishes on the top of page 82. And this is what it says. It says, Christ's teaching, like his sympathies, embrace the world. Never can there be a circumstance of life, a crisis in human experience, which has not been anticipated in his teaching and for which its principles have not a lesson? The prince of teachers, his words will be found a guide to his co-workers till the end of time. We're all his co-workers. <coughs> no matter what capacity we work for God. And so God has the answers we need in his word. May he bless us all as we seek him, as Mary did sitting at his feet. We can sit at his feet and receive everything we need for every day. Study the word of God. We are to obey the word of God. Okay. As it doesn't mean anything to us. Because last week uh, an elder preached. And he said, get rid of the TV. 
Didn't he? Oh, you all weren't listening, huh? Well, I, I, I moved one step. I got the TV out of my bedroom. Right? At least I'm, I'm making a step, right? So it's now out of my bedroom. The TV, the TV set is out. Uh, my wife said, okay, I'll grant your request. It's out of the bedroom. So that's one less distraction. I have, uh, since we have started uh, our revival, I endeavor to start reading the Bible. I want to spend more time, I want to read the Bible like I never did it before. I mean, I read the Bible through and through already, and I feel like I don't know anything about it now. Um, so I want to go deep, and deep I understand the Bible is inexhaustible. So I want to spend time, quality time, and study and read and meditate a day to day on the Word of God, for I know it will transform Amen. my life. I hope you're going to say it. Let us start. We about well, we have a tradition in high school here where we join hands together and we beseech God, we talk to God on behalf of ourselves and on behalf of others. We go into the throne room, a privilege is given unto us. We don't understand how, how much privilege we have. Back then, we had to go, all of us here had to go kill a lamb just to confess our sin. And we confess our sin to the priest, and the priest would take it to the, to the but the day he understand the sanctuary message, and this whole uh, process, now we can just bow our heads and pray God will hear us. But he's not our high priest. Let us come with the dial and join hands while we approach from Sister Adele and lead us in the prayer. Father Lord, 
be with the speaker today. Speak through him, Lord, and help us, Lord, to be to receive your word, Lord, and not only receive it, but put it in practice in our life. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for the pastor who is not here with us, Lord, that you may bless him, Lord, in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. as well as Sister Balsa. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord, each one of us here is family members, Lord. I pray that you be with them, Lord. Bless them. And those who will not who were not able to make it today, Lord. Be with them and bless them. I thank you, Father, Lord, for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Special music. <laughs> 